Hello and welcome back to Business Matters at the Hindu with me, K. Bharat Kumar. Every time that the union budget is announced, we all check out the news, almost in a frenzy, as we should. It's important. But if you just let a couple of days, a few days pass and wait for the dust to settle, some nuances may become more clear to us. Normally, if you notice the budget to say, for example, over the last two decades, what happens is, actually one or both of two things happen. The government comes out and clarifies on some points that may have been obscure to listeners, or we get a chance to understand the thinking that has gone on part of the government into these numbers. So in this episode, let's take a look at some of the nuances that have emerged since the day the budget was announced for first. But we'll still look at a few factoids before we go ahead. Quantico, an economics research firm, has done up a succinct summary for us. Credit to agriculture will rise rupees 20 lakh crore with a focus on animal husbandry, dairy and fisheries for the year 2023-24. The government has announced a strong capital expenditure plan. More on that later, but the gist is that the focus will be on roads, railways and telecom. Customs duty benefits for equipment needed to make lithium-ion batteries are on. This is an EV push. The gem and jewellery sector gets a leg up with R&D grants lower duties for lab-grown diamonds. And if you want to know what those are, check out this very nice short video we've done up for you on the topic and here's the URL. Electronics, which has emerged a clear winner on the manufacturing front over the past couple of years, gets more benefits on the duty front. If we step back and take a 30,000 foot view into some of the macro numbers, a couple of points emerge. SBI economists point out that in this budget, the capital expenditure to GDP ratio has been the highest seen in 18 years and the subsidy to GDP ratio is the lowest seen in 17 years. Subsidies are a very critical component of the government's budget. For example, fertilizer subsidies, food subsidies and so on. And it's important it keeps some parts of the economy running. But all governments would also like to make sure that the subsidies reach only those who deserve it. So it's not frittered away. Tax slabs have changed in the new or what is called the concessional tax regime. Some see this as putting some more money in the hands of taxpayers that would spur consumption demand in the country. Considering that the global environment is gloomy and our exports may not give us a leg up, domestic consumption would have to bear a large part of the burden to push the economy along. The slide on your screen shows the different slabs as announced in this budget for FY 2023-24 as compared to this fiscal year ending March 2023. This budget also offers a higher rebate ceiling of Rs. 7 lakh up from Rs. 5 lakh. So much for the factoids, we had a few questions of our own across topics and here's what we came up with. The first is to do with the personal income tax. Generally, governments try and encourage taxpayers to save a lot more by encouraging investments in EPF, public provident fund or in the form of investments in insurance, health, life, and so on. But if the government is trying to encourage taxpayers to move from the old to the new tax regime, where the new tax regime has all exemptions out, and for most slabs, if you opt for it without exemptions, you would probably end up with a lower tax rate. So if that happens, isn't that a signal to actually move away from savings? Aren't we discouraging savings? Is a question we had. And here's what the government says. Revenue Secretary Mr. Sanjay Malhotra avers that that wouldn't be the case as household savings based on such tax exemptions are actually a very small proportion of total savings. He points out that Rs. 4 lakh crore of the country's total household savings of about Rs. 25 lakh crore are parked through these tax saving instruments. Here's a small factoid before we go ahead. India's savings rate is between 27 and 30 percent of GDP. Mr. Malhotra says that even if people move to the new tax regime, they will not stop saving and the market too will come up with alternatives to ensure that it attracts savings from those who moved away from the old exemptions driven regime. Interestingly, Finance Secretary Mr. TV Somanathan feels that the old exemption driven tax regime actually didn't encourage a lot of savings. He cites the example of somebody who's just above that 7 lakh limit that we discussed and says for such a person, especially if he or she is a sole breadwinner, if, the, if you count the family expenses, children's school fees, uniform, transport and so on, it's very difficult to maximize the savings to take the most advantage of the exemptions driven regime. His example is that of somebody who earns 7.5 lakh rupees per annum. To be able to maximize the savings and be better off in the old tax regime, that person has to save and invest an equivalent of rupees 1.62 lakh. 
He says it's possible, but not everybody can do that. If that were the case, then a person is better off paying a lower tax rate in the new tax regime. In the new tax regime, what has also happened is the exemption limit for leave encashment benefits received by the salaried at retirement has been raised from 3 lakh to rupees 25 lakh. It will be tax free in the hands of the salaried under the new income tax regime, even if the salaried person switches to the new regime in the year of retirement. Mr. Malhotra points out that this will translate into savings of almost rupees 7 lakh in taxes under the old system on the rupees 22 lakh hike in the limit. This is almost rupees 20,000 rupees of savings a year over a 33 year working life. Next, we'll take a look at another macroeconomic figure, disinvestments. This year, the government does not seem to have been as aggressive as it was seen in earlier years. And historically, if you've seen from the turn of the century, all the NDA governments have been very aggressive about disinvestment targets. But for the year ending now, March 2023, the disinvestment target was revised downwards from Rs. 65,000 crore to about 50,000 crore. I mean, even for the coming year, FY24, the target has been set at 51,000 crore rupees. The privatization of two public sector banks and one general insurance firm announced in the budget two years ago is off the table for now. The focus, says Department of Investment and Public Asset Management, DPM Secretary Mr. Tuhin Kanta Pandey, said, in the coming year, the focus will be to execute the approved transactions that are already in the pipeline, such as IDBI Bank, NMDC Steel, Container Corporation of India, Shipping Corporation, BEML and the like. It's clear that no new proposals are to be expected anytime soon. The other metric that people watch out for in budgets is the fiscal deficit and this time that metric has thrown up a bit of a debate among economists. The finance minister mentioned that 5.9% as fiscal deficit is the target for 2023-24 and for the year ending March 2023, we will meet the target of 6.4%. So it's a narrowing of the fiscal deficit that we are aiming for. But more important than that is the glide path or the target to be achieved by a certain year. Say in this case, it's 2025-26. The government wants to go down to 4.5% for the fiscal deficit. So if you do 5.9% for FY24, then we have only two years left to reach that 4.4%. It's a tough ask. The thinking that has gone behind arriving at these numbers is that the global economic environment is rather gloomy right now. And obviously because of that, our exports won't give us a leg up like they did for the year ended March 2022. So the idea is to go with the pace of global growth right now and see in two years if growth all over the globe picks up then we will be able to ride that crest. The other area that the finance secretary, Mr. Somarathan, wanted to bring to focus is on the jobs front. The budget speech had the highest references to job creation since the one presented for the financial year 2018-19. He says the capital expenditure plan by the government itself would help indirectly in terms of jobs creation. But as important is the 2 lakh crore rupees of low interest credit being extended to micro, small and medium enterprises. He says it is expected to cut the cost of borrowing by 1% across industry. It will make it cheaper for every MSME taking a loan under the CGT MSE collateral free loan scheme. These are targeted at the most labor intensive employers. Lab grown diamonds is likely to be a big source of jobs as will medical device courses to train people in operating them. He points out that the PM Kaushal Vikas Yojana 4.0 is different this time in the kind of courses on offer. Earlier, it was cookery, tailoring and welding. Now it's coding, artificial intelligence, robotics, mechatronics, internet of things, 3D printing and drone skills. He points out that these are the trades of the future. Some economists have pointed out that there are still gaps left to be filled by this budget when you look at the numbers. For example, an important area such as education has not seen as high an allocation as they would have liked to see. But Mr. Somanathan has a different point of view. He says here it's the quality that matters and not the quantity and pushing in more funds into the sector will not help us achieve desired results. He says we do have adequate number of teachers if we look at the teacher to student ratio. He's also pointing out that the number of children is actually declining demographically. The important questions to ask are is the teacher regular in attendance? Does he or she teach well? Does he or she give homework to the children? Does the teacher pass the children in these tests and exams whether or not the child has learnt the basics? 
This, he says, is critical. That's all we have for now, folks. But what did you think of the budget? In the time that has passed since February 1st, have you come across any more nuances that the media might have missed? Do let us know in the comments below. Until we meet again next week, have a lovely week ahead.